What's up all you cool cats and kittens? This is Eddie coming at you live from Flex Arm here at our beautiful facility here in Wapak, Ohio via YouTube live stream. We're really excited to be able to host every single one of you. We're gonna be doing some amazing demonstrations today on our hydraulic tapping arm, our pneumatic tapping arm, and we're gonna be tapping vertically as well as horizontally using our special OSG taps. Now, before we get started, let's lay a couple of housekeeping items out. This is a live stream, so we wanna encourage as much interaction as possible. So as you'll notice on the right side of your screen, there's a chat box. So we have a couple of our inside individuals in that specific box, and I want you to feel free to post any questions, comments that you may have so we can answer them, pull them up on the screen, and do it all in real time. So again, thank you all for joining us. We're super excited about the demos we're gonna be able to do today. And this is a very special demo because we're gonna be having a very special guest join us here in the not so distant future. One of the real OGs from OG, sorry, OSG USA, Danny Nichols. But until we get him pulled in, we're gonna get our demonstration started. So what we're going to be doing first is we're going to be showcasing one of our hydraulic tapping arms. Here we have our GHM 45. So what we're going to do is we're going to start off using an inch and a half tap. We're going to be tapping in this mild steel. And we're going to showcase the capabilities of going from one size of tap to the next by transitioning down to that three eighths in a matter of seconds. So as Nick gets everything set up here with the GH45, you're going to get a significant amount of reach. It's got a tap capacity of up to an inch and a half, which is exactly what we're going to be doing today. So as we get things dialed in, we'll make sure to keep it lubricated. Nick, when have you ready let's let her rip yeah so you guys you saw me put in I'm, I'm putting in the big tap this is an inch and a half spiral bottoming tap we're going into mild steel here today we're going to be driving this thing all the way to the bottom two inches or uh, two inches deep so i've got the power unit on i've got it in low gear just for the high torque we're going to be pulling around 325 foot pounds of torque here so i'm just gonna i'll put a little lube on there just to help it down and we're going to bring it over to the hole and start running down if you got a close up of this, you ready? Like that mild steel, all the way to the bottom, you can see the threads coming up. It's gonna clutch out. That way you don't break the tap. We're pulling a lot of torque. I'll get this thing out of here. I wanna show you, Eddie. Actually, before I do that, I'm gonna do a quick change. There we go. I wanna show you guys the versatility using these OSG taps. So we're gonna go from inch and a half down to three eighths. Shifting gears. It's as simple as that, I'm gonna bring it over to the hole. So there we just went from inch and a half down to three eighths using these spiral bottoming taps from OSG. Mm -hmm. I mean, just zero issues. You're not gonna break a tap, makes it super fast and easy. Mm -hmm. We did this, we were going about an inch deep with the 3 8 tap, I think uh, 250 RPM in this case. Mm -hmm. I'll show you. Take this big boy out. There we go. And just like that, everybody's able to see the quick transition. Want to get you a smooth finish here. Let's see how close we can get. Is that good, Tiff? Good deal. Just like butter, whether it's new threads, you're doing some chasing. Oh, it's dry. Absolutely ripping through this inch and a half. Good deal, as well as the three eights. Fantastic, fantastic. Tiffany, grab a grab a close up of this. She'll just bring it over to the camera. There we go. There we go. Check this specific tap out here. Well, fantastic. I mean, that was again was a was a great demonstration of how we can use the versatility of one of these hydraulic units. So as we go, you want to take this move, Nick. We're going to move on over here. We're going to move into our pneumatic realm. Now, this specific arm here, this is our baseline pneumatic. This is our a32 pneumatic tapping arm and we're going to be tapping just two separate sizes we're going to be doing three here so we have our three eighths we're going to be doing in a through hole we got a quarter inch blind hole and then we're going to do a quarter inch as a through hole as well so we're going to also be featuring the capabilities of using the specific taps switching to one of our chamfer tools in a matter of seconds and being able to go back and forth without creating a lot of downtime from you or your specific operators. So as Nick gets this all loaded up, the first thing that we're gonna start with here is our quarter inch through holes. So we're gonna get those all loaded up. Actually, actually we're gonna yeah. do, let's do the three eighths through hole. Right, three eighths, right, absolutely. So this first one, I'll show you. So I'm coming, you can see the, this is mild steel, one inch thick, 
There's a little close up of our shop. Tiffany mm. can grab that for you guys so you can see mm. what we're going to be pushing yeah. through there. Now, so this, this is right. you'll see it's pointy. We're going, it's a through hole. So in this case, it's a three fluted straight tap. So we're going to come straight through, um, pushing the threads out through the bottom. That's uh, super simple. Mm. You don't, yeah. you don't want to drop your tap. Yeah. And another thing to take in consideration as Nick gets this all set up, this arm specifically does have 9 16th capability in general, mild steel, and it's actually powered by hydraulic, or sorry, pneumatic airline, and you're going to be having requirements of anywhere from, you know, 90 to 120 PSI or anywhere from 20 to 24 CFM. So we're going to start here with our quick change chuck. We're going to be just chamfering these holes with a 3 8 Jacobs chuck going right into the spindle. Yeah, I like showing the Jacobs first, just as a, it's a quick change option so I can Right over here, I can just give the hole a little kiss, chamfer, and now we just pop in our tap. So just no adjustments, bring it over the hole and send it all the way down, pushing the chips all the way through, hit reverse, do it again, all the way through. Super fast and easy, no setup, no adjustments. All right. So let's talk about the next one. What's yeah, the next, so, Eddie? Yeah, so next we're going to be moving to this quarter inch. We're going to be doing a blind hole this time. I know we saw the clutch engage over on the GHM 45. We're going to be doing the same exact concept with the pneumatic arm. And then while Nick is actually getting this all set up on that quarter inch, this right here uh, is the dreadful hand tap. I'm really surprised, and you would be surprised about how many people are still using this. And so you can imagine taking a tool like this and going rotation by rotation, it would seriously take you minutes and significantly a longer amount of time than what you're going to be able to do just with the specific flex arm. So let's get a close up of here of what's going on, and we'll get this plate loaded so we can tap this quarter inch and mild steel with a blind hole. And if you look it up, we got a little bit of B-roll here. We actually have our great friends over at Lindsay Machinery yeah. there in Missouri. Yeah. Look at this race hand here. It's versus flex arm. So <laughs> one-sided. I feel bad for the guy doing the hand tapping, but somebody had to do it. So Tiffany, you got a close-up of this so we can show him. There we go. All right. So here, blind holes, quarter inch, uh, quarter 20, bottoming, spiral tap. Again, here in this case, instead of pushing the, the, the threads through, we're going to be taking those chips and pulling them up. We'll go to the bottom. It's going to bottom out, clutch out. Again, I can handy dandy Jacobs, pop that in there, prep the hole, give a little chamfer for where we're going to tap. Pop in my quarter inch. Just bring it over and run it on down. Clutch it out at the bottom, done. So, again, you really saw, you could see even with the small taps, you don't have to worry about breaking your tap. And especially mm. when you're using a solid tap like this, you can, you're, you can have confidence mm. that those the chips are going to come up out of the hole and not mm. worry about it. There you go. Really good I'll points. Work. Again, another demonstration of being able to go from the chamfering straight up to the tapping in just a matter of seconds. So what do you want to do next, Eddie? Yeah. Well, hey, we're going to be checking out the same style, same size. We're doing the quarter inch, but we're going to be going through a, a through hole, if you will. Now, one thing to take note about this specific uh, of application is we're going to be going four deep. So for those of you who may not be super familiar with the terminology, this is a quarter inch tap, and we're going through an inch thick steel plate. So typically, a lot of taps are used on that two deep, where they'll go about twice the diameter. Here, we're pushing through with just our baseline pneumatic arm, four times the diameter of this specific tap, and you'll be able to see it do it relatively easily. All right. I think, I don't know if Tiffany's got a close up of this, but mm -hmm. you can see it on the screen. These are the through holes. Again, here, smaller quarter 20, spiral point, uh, our straight flute, pointy tap. We're going to push those threads all the way through the hole. And then Isaac, if you don't mind, while we get stuff set up, you want to potentially find a tapping arm question we could pull up here and ask for the time being? So we got a handful of them. What are the maintenance, Tyler, it says, what are the maintenance issues with the pneumatic machines? Nick, would you like to speak to that? Maintenance issues. No, so for pneumatic, I'll, let me tap this one, I'll get to it. You ready, Tiffany? There we go. I'll show this for you. Guys. So you'll notice it clutched a little bit before I got all the way through. We're going four times the diameter for this quarter 20 tap. Mm -hmm. So all this doing is binding up with some of those static clutches, mm -hmm. but that's it's by design. That protects the tap from snapping. So we just go in and out. We peck tap it a little bit. 
and then we push it all the way through like you guys saw. There we go. There we go. Three solid examples of what we can do, at least in a vertical realm with the A32. So uh, what does it see here? Jeff Dodderman, no adjustments needed between different size taps. Now we're talking about adjustments between yeah. the standard tap holders. Go ahead, Nick. So yeah, you mm -hmm. saw, just to answer that question, you saw, especially with these, these, these three different OSG taps, I've got each tap has its own holder. That way I don't have to worry about setting clutches individually. So each tap going inside of its own holder, that, that, that clutch is preset. So I don't have to worry about it. Um, and that, that's how we're accomplishing that. That's why there's zero adjustments mm -hmm. between taps. And I don't have to worry about, especially on the big one, you saw when we went from inch and a half down to three eighths, you, you don't have to worry about the clutch mm -hmm. adjusting or, or, or you having mm -hmm. to change that. All no, right. Great questions. Great question. So as we kind of finalize some things here, I mean, feel free to pull up any other questions that you may have. But with us going vertical on both of these machines, next we want to step over to our GHM 45 and we're going to get gnarly. We're going horizontal. Move that thing. All right. Now for the GHM45, a lot of it's gonna be the same. We're still using that mild steel block. We're still gonna be tapping at an inch and a half. We're just gonna flip things around a little bit and we're going in horizontally. Alrighty, Tiffany, you got a good shot of the arm? Mm -hmm. There we go. There we go. And what we've there done, we I know we kind of did it behind the scenes, but what makes this arm special and what the M essentially in this model stands for is that multi-position head. There are two bolts that lock it on each specific axis. And what we've done is we've loosened one to allow free rotation along the other that allow us to keep that plane when we're going along multiple parts and allows us to tap horizontally much, much easier. So here you'll see, I've got the, the arm. So for the horizontal plane tapping, we've kicked the head horizontally and we're allowing it to pivot still on this axis. So that way, when I come up over the hole right here, I, it, the, the arm can easily follow follow in the hole, and uh, and we're gonna get a beautiful thread. I'm gonna just pop in this big tap. I'll kick the power unit on. Yeah, we wanna validate. I gotta put it in gear one for the high torque. There we go. Get some lube on there and then you're ready, Tiffany. I'm gonna send it down in there. You ready? All right, let's go. I was at two inches deep. You see that clutch? Tons of torque. Woo. There we go. Just more proof, so it doesn't matter whether it's vertical, horizontal, inch and a half, whatever the capacity may be for that specific arm, able to run through it, hot knife through butter. Great example, great now, example there. Now let's talk about the, uh, before we go over, we're gonna do some horizontal tapping with the uh, the, A30, the A32, the small tapper. Uh, but before Wait, that, well Nick, we actually got a question here from somebody, wanted to make sure we address that. Yeah, so ahead. Craig actually says, how do you make sure the tap is square when you change it to horizontal. So there are a couple of ways to do that, and I know we are gonna be demonstrating that in a later video, but a short sense is we have what we call a magnetic alignment plug, and as long as you have a flat surface that's specifically level to the angle in which you're trying to engage the part, we use that with a loose axis, using that magnetic alignment plug on the space, line exactly. it up, gap it, tighten it back up so that you can maintain that specific orientation. Really good question, keep those coming. Tiffany's gonna grab a shot of that, that plug. Good deal, good deal. So as you're seeing here up on our screen, this is our magnetic alignment plug. It goes right into the chuck, so you can use that again when both sides are loosened up. It goes up against the side of a flat surface or a specific angle that you're trying to accomplish. Lock it into place, let her rip. Great question. Isaac, you got any more questions? Or Nick, is there anything you wanted to go through before we switched over to the next section? No, let's show, uh, well, let's just touch on it uh, on the MPT tapping quickly mm -hmm. and see if there's any questions about that. Good deal. The, uh, so I mean, basically, he'll show off the tap you know, the, the, that's another great application. That's a uh, that's just a great example of a big NPT tap. And that's where these big hydraulic arms can help a bunch with that, especially with a, a depth control. We're able to consistently just set a depth and hit it every single time. But those take a ton of torque to pull and uh, can take a lot of machine time if I'm gonna do it on my CNC. So great application for the flex arm uh, using that mm -hmm. tap from OSG. And mm -hmm. uh, I just like showing that thing off quick, but. 
No, we definitely get a lot of questions about MPT tapping, especially with our hydraulic uh, devices. So it's definitely good to be able to bring that up and feature that there. Can so I show you, I'm gonna grab this. Right on. Getting all set up. So while we're waiting, we're doing some transitioning. Isaac, you wanna pull up another question for us to tackle? And as we get this loaded up, the next thing that we are actually going to be doing is since we have tapped horizontally with the GHM45, we're going to move over to the same A32 pneumatic arm, and we're going to be able to tap that horizontally as well. We got everything ready to go over there? You guys are ready. All right, no worry. Don't worry about that question. We'll make sure to address those. Let's get everything rolling this way. Here we go. All right. <laughs> All right, so a little different. Now, mind you, we saw the multi-position head on one of our hydraulic units. This is a little bit different on the A32. Want to get a good shot of that if we can. This is our adapter that we specifically use. It does take a little bit of changing, but again, we will be showing that in a later video, so you'll have to stay tuned. But we're using here this three tap. We're going through the same material, doing a through hole. It does have a dead handle in case you're doing any type of application, such as chamfering, reaming, whatever it may be, or deburring. So, but for this specific example, Nick's going to tap this hole horizontally, the three eighths through. All righty. So again, same deal here. I just pick which, uh, no adjustments to line it up. I'm just going to pick my thread that I want to go. I'm going to, this, this is pivoting to allow me to adjust that quickly and easily. I'm gonna line up to my workpiece and just let it guide itself right into the hole. All the way through, you can see those chips pushing out the back. Hit reverse, come on out. Just beautiful threads, super easy. Let's do another. Look at that. All the way through, just push them all the way in. We'll tap it a little bit. There's that clutch. There we go. So that's horizontal tapping with the A32. So this unit, you saw the big unit for the big tapping. We like showing this one off for the smaller tapping. This can still go up to 916s really well, but uh, just some great examples showing vertical tapping, horizontal, mm -hmm. using great tooling. All the tooling today has been provided by OSG. They're mm -hmm. the number one tap provider. Um, and uh, love showing that. We do have a question, Eddie. Yeah, let's talk about it. So Brandon asks, explain the depth control options, manual, versus digital hey if you don't mind nick i can grab i'll talk about the pneumatic if you'd like to speak to the hydraulic depth control yeah so yeah. on the on the hydraulic we've got two options guys we we can basically put a rod depth control where mm -hmm. it, it's an, an, an interrupter and uh you just manually adjust the rod you set it to the depth that you want so every time i'm running it down it stops and then you hit reverse so and or we have a digital depth control where you type in your pitch and your desired depth and when you hit engage, it automatically runs down and then automatically reverses. Mm -hmm. So, and, and then you could talk uh, the, the depths off with this unit. Oh, well, essentially it's, it's very similar. It's just that rod system to where the point where you will have it set, it will be attached to the mount here. So as long as you have that adjusted to the specific desired depth that you need, as soon as it comes in contact with the surface, it will prohibit the tap from going down any further and will allow you to reverse it out with the specific depth that you have it set at so pretty simple pretty easy to use yeah. man not a lot of crazy moving parts so um typically at this point i mean if we have any other general questions we'd love to be able to get things answered and know it was unfortunate we couldn't have danny here with us due to some technicals we will have more but it looks we have another uh, question pulled up what's the largest mpt done with a flex arm that's nick what have we done man yeah we, some gnarly uh, stuff no we, we've done a three inch mpt with the flex arm before um the uh, and it was i believe it was in a softer material but uh mm -hmm. but yeah that's a gnarly tap that's huge so well i'll tell you what in uh in an upcoming stream what we'll do is we'll get some tools together we'll run some big mpts um and look mm -hmm. to do a, a stream where we do some pu we push the limits of the flex arm and we'll see how mm -hmm. big we can actually tap uh we'll grab some aluminum mm -hmm. some steel and uh because we can push up to 800 foot pounds of torque with our biggest unit with this mm -hmm. guy right here actually it's just hanging out here but this this big flex arm mm -hmm. this will pull 800 foot pounds of torque so in our, our next video, we'll, we'll find out what the biggest MPT tap is. <laughs> yeah, and to answer your question, Jeff, what are the air requirements? With these uh, pneumatic arms, you're looking anywhere from 90 to 120 PSI or rocking out 20 to 24 CFM. Great question. 
Okay. And that, what's next? We're doing, uh, I think next week, guys, we're doing, mm. or is it the external threading? Yeah, absolutely. So what we're going to be doing is we, we do have a lot of customers who like to know about external threading. So just like the dreadful hand tapping, there are people in this world that are still doing external threading by hand. So we have a great option with a specific tap holder that we put right into the chuck. And we have specific types of die holders, or at least external threading cutters that we can place within this fitting. And we're going to be doing a video on that here in the near future so with that nick is there anything else before we start closing it on out oh that no we had a uh oh what's this here okay okay so torque uh, form tapping just as well as cut tapping yeah absolutely uh we use the arms for form tapping all the time so it just it whatever tap you want i'll show you where's a basically form taps as long whatever square and shank that tap has it's going to fit in our tap holder um and then we can it takes a little more downward pressure maybe to get it started. But other than that, it form taps really well. Um, it's a, That's a good question and a great application. There you go. So, so counterbalance in the arm. Craig has a question about the counterbalance. So what you guys are seeing here, especially with these big arms, so you can really see it with this guy, with that counterbalance. You're, you can see the gas cylinders here and here. And that's how we're counterbalancing that arm. And it's a parallelogram, keeping everything nice and square to the surface. But uh, with these gas struts is how we're counterbalancing these arms and making it uh, essentially weightless and, and super easy to move around so I can uh, position for big taps or those really small taps. Anything else, Isaac? We got any other questions before we go? What about metric Metric, taps? good I talk question. About metric taps, there we go. Hey, same, same deal. These, uh, these tap holders will size it depending on the square and the shank, whether it's imperial or metric, we'll match it to the tap holder and you just push it right in. Mm -hmm. So again, each tap is going to get its own holder, but the imperial and metric tap holders sometimes cross over. So you can, uh, I still suggest, you know, if I've got a uh, an M6 and and, and, a, and a quarter, I'm going to put those to, I'm going to get two mm -hmm. separate tap holders for those, but uh, they could be the same tap holder. Mm -hmm. So Brandon wants to know about tapping uh, in the CNC versus flex arm. So, just like that, we actually have a banner that says, you know, you can see what we're doing. We're tapping offline. I think it's especially, it stands out with, where's my big guy? With these, with these big taps like this, you know, a, a lot of machines, they don't have the torque to pull this. So what they have to do is they, they have to thread mill it. You know, and so unless I have a really nice thread mill, I have to single point it. And that's just going to take a lot of time on my CNC as opposed to just putting it in a flex arm and sending it down through there. I think you saw on that inch and a half, for instance, that took us 12 seconds, mm -hmm. 12 seconds in and out. So if I had to single point thread mill that on the machine, it's gonna take me a whole lot longer than that. And uh, I don't have the exact time, but I, I think there's estimates from customers where, I mean, we're, we're shaving anywhere from five to 10 minutes off of cycle times by taking mm -hmm. these big taps out of the machine. Mm -hmm. So, and that's where just tapping offline can save a lot of time. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and one thing to take in consideration, another thing for our customers that we offer are tap tests. So if at any point you're curious about how your specific part can be handled and how one of our arms will hold up to it, we always encourage you to feel free to send those parts in. We'll gladly tap and create a video and send them out to you directly. So last, last thing, last question on external threads. We touched on it earlier, but uh, we will do this next, next week or two weeks from now. Mm -hmm. We'll schedule another mm -hmm. stream and uh, can't do everything next week. We will we'll run some external threads. We'll show you how it's done with the flex arm um, and how we can complement some, mm -hmm. especially on longer parts with mm -hmm. uh, with those setups, running some uh, outs, uh, external threading. So um, we do. other than that, we do. you got anything else? No, man, I think we should be good. I just want to say thank you for everyone who's uh, reaching out and have checked out you know, this general live stream. I want to encourage you to check out our Flex CNC and Flex Arm YouTube page. But hit that subscribe button, turn on your notifications, and as my daughters would say, give us a huge thumbs up. We would greatly appreciate it so we can keep you up to date on all the action. So thank you everyone in the back for helping us. Isaac, Tiffany, Adam, big shout out. Nick, our handsome help here. We thank you all so much. Stay awesome, stay flexing, and we will see you next time. See ya.